Welcome back to my channel, Tiffany here of Tiffany Gray Cosplay, and I'm a professional costume and prop fabricator as well as educator here on YouTube, and would love to have you as part of our cosplay building community, so subscribe to the channel. On today's cosplay tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make some jewelry, Aww. specifically the necklace and the earrings for my son cosplay from the anime Princess Mononoke. So let's begin. And here are all of the tools and materials for making the earrings and the necklace. And I'll have links to all of this in the description, as well as a 2D blueprint, which is available on my website, the link in the description. First, starting off with making the earrings. And for this, you're going to need Costool's circle cutter, as well as 10 millimeter EVA foam. And then you're gonna cut out two circles to the length. And then you're gonna get Costool's hole drills their smallest size, and you're gonna use this to make a hole at the very top part, a little bit away from the edge. This will be what your ear hook will go through. Then to your workbench and grab your Dremel as well as a sanding drum and round all of your edges. For me, I made these more like a flying saucer towards the edges so that way it kind of looked more carved and had a little more shape to it. And the last step for these earrings is to heat treat the foam with your heat gun. Now for the necklace. And for this, you're gonna be first starting off with 15 millimeter foam dowels and you'll cut four of these to the length that you want. And then I grabbed my pokey end of my ceramic tool and poked a hole all the way through this. You can also drill out a hole, but be very careful then to the workbench and just round out those edges with a sanding drum. And of course, you will want to heat treat these afterwards to complete these bead parts. Now for the fang-like pieces for the necklace. And for this, we're gonna be using a larger foam dowel, a 30 millimeter one, cutting three pieces to the length that you want. And then I'd recommend drawing guidelines on the top part. And I did this in a more triangle-like shape at the bottom and a round shape at the top. When I was happy with the kind of image that I want, I then cut it to that shape and then rotated the piece and did the exact same thing for the other side. Once I had those four sides basic cut, it's time to use a box cutter and kind of round out and carve the pieces. You're gonna like whittle to a point at the tip and you can round out the back side a little bit more, but it doesn't matter if it's rough looking cause we're gonna sand it in a bit. And I also went in with a sanding stone at the 90 degree angle and kind of carved in some lines. So these fans Things actually look more like teeth and have a little bit more texture and weren't flat. And you can also do this with an X-Acto knife, but remember you will need to use a heat gun afterwards, not to just heat treat your foam, but to open up all of those carved out channels. And the very last step for these is to poke the hole at the tip to complete all of your necklace parts. Now for painting. And here are all the tools and materials that you will need for painting. Reminder, you do not have to use an airbrush gun and compressor. You can always hand paint this with a paintbrush and I'll have links to everything in the description. The first thing for all of these parts is to prime them and for this we're going to be using Plasti Dip. Applying three heavy coats of Plasti Dip onto all sides of the necklace and the earrings. Reminder to wait an hour between each coat so that way it can fully dry. And a helpful tip for painting and priming the parts of the necklace is I got a wooden stick or a toothpick and kind of put it into the hole and this made it so I had a handle to hold all of these pieces and I could put them in a little stand afterwards to dry. And the airbrush paint that we're going to be using throughout this project is provided by Createx Colors, specifically their Wicked Color line. And for our first piece that we're going to be painting is all of the beads for the necklace, starting off with jet black as our first base coat and followed by blue. And the last thing for these beads is to seal them and we're going to be using Createx Colors UVLS Satin Clear, applying this by hand with a paintbrush and that completes our beads for the necklace. Now for the earrings as well as the fangs. And we're going to start off with our base coat of cream. And airbrush painting is all about layers, so we want our next layer to be a darker layer. And for this, we're going to be doing a mixture of cream, Hansa yellow, and violet to give us this light brown look. Which 
which will kind of emulate the undertones of bones. Next, we're gonna do some dry painting, and this is where you have a paintbrush that you do not dip into water, it is just dry, and you're gonna dip it into cream and lightly cover it all over the fangs and the earrings. And to give it more depth, you can apply more paint to make it whiter and make it brighter, or you can apply it in thinner layers, and this will cause the brown color that we previously did to show through and make it look more bone-like. Now back with the airbrush gun, and we're gonna be doing a mixture of cream, Hansi yellow, violet, as well as jet black. And for this, we're gonna be applying it to small amounts at a time. And while the paint is still wet, you're gonna grab a paper towel and wipe it away. This is gonna be not only adding another layer of depth to our pieces, but it's also gonna have all of those dark colors go into the cracks and seams and just make it feel a lot more realistic. And the final step will be grabbing your airbrush cleaner for your airbrush gun, putting it onto a dry piece of paper towel and while it is still wet on your paper towel you're going to rub it onto the surface of your piece. This is going to cause the top layer of the paint to come off slightly and you can buff it so it'll actually look like somebody has been touching that part and it'll look like more oils have been touching the surface and just give it another layer of depth. And for me, I wanted my son cosplay to be more realistic, which means we had to add blood to this piece. And if you don't want blood, then you can skip this part. But for me, it's gonna be blood. And the best color I found is using Kratex Colors Candy Line, specifically their Blood Red. And again, I grabbed a dry paintbrush and dipped the paintbrush into the paint and spritzed it onto my earrings. And you can do this as much or as little as you want. I tried to match it where I had blood marks on the actual headdress as well as the dress, so that way it kind of matched where the blood splatters were, as well as onto the necklace. And the last part is to seal all of these pieces with Cretex Colors UVLS Satin Clear. And you can do this with a paintbrush. However, if you use the blood red color, you will have to use an airbrush gun as that paint will smear everywhere. Now to assemble everything. And here are all the tools that I used for assembling the earrings and the necklace. Again, I'll have links to everything in the description. First, starting off with the earrings. And you can buy pre-made ear hooks, but I had some from my metalsmithing jewelry days, and basically these are a silver wire that are for ear hooks, but you have to make them from hand. So basically I started with my specific jump ring pliers, and I made it into an ear hook-like shape, and most likely whatever ear hook you have will not have a large enough jump ring at the bottom to fit onto your earrings, so I actually had some other silver jump rings that I just attached to the ear hook and then I attached it into our EVA foam earring part and closed it using two pairs of pliers to complete the earrings. Now for assembling the necklace. And for this, I grabbed some of my leather cording that I had and I cut a really, really long strip. You'll probably wanna cut more than what you need just cause you're gonna have to tie a knot and you want it to be long enough. Then slowly feed it through each of the pieces, starting off with a bead, then a fang, then a bead, then a fang, then a bead, then a fang, and finish with a bead. And I didn't want all of these pieces to move. So I tied a knot at either end of the beads. This would secure all of them in place. And then I did a final knot at the end. I highly recommend putting this on first before doing your knot so you know how low you want it to hang. But after that, your earrings and your necklace are complete! Congratulations, you made jewelry, yay! And that guys is how I made the earrings as well as the necklace for my song cosplay from Princess Mononoke. I hope that this video was helpful for making your very own for your son cosplay, or maybe just wear some everyday fashion wear, cause this looks very wonderful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if so, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. As well as don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. A big thank you to all of my company sponsors here on YouTube, as well as all of my YouTube members, specifically those legendary members who financially help to support me so I can continue doing this as my full-time job and my main source of income. And I will see you for more cosplay tutorials, most likely some more Sun Princess Mononoke ones. So stay tuned.